Hello, it's Sarah, and everybody's in bed. Yeah, anyway, I'm going to do this project. This is a Plum Purdy design. You can get this for free, this pattern, and print it out. Summer Melon, it's called, and it's on the Plum Purdy website. So it's www.plumpurdy.com, and it'll say free designs or free patterns, and then you just print it out. Um, I decided to do this. I got, I think it was Susan that requested it, but I haven't painted in a while. Mm, and it's so cute. It has dragonflies. It's simple, too. It's just basic and little. And I'm going to go right now. This video is going to be prepping your surface for a uh, decorative painting project. I have already traced the pattern onto tracing paper. Um... And I am going to use the, see, she, she gives you the exact directions to do. A color picture, then all your supplies, so the paint colors she uses, and I tend to, to substitute out whatever I have on hand because I have so much paint. Um, and over the years, the names change. They tweak it a little bit, um, but I'm a bottle baby, so I, I have lots of these different color paints. Uh, the brushes that she used to get the um, desired effects. The additional supplies are, I don't know why she has wood glue, tracing paper, graphite paper, stencil. So I probably have some type of a diamond stencil. The picture, anyway, we'll get to that later. But for today, I'm going to do, and this is a, it's a cut breadboard from quarter inch Baltic, Baltic birch plywood and I happen to have this in my basement which um, we cut to this little uh, breadboard and it was a um, an angel it was already cut it was a big piece and I'm never gonna paint it again so we cut it down I cut this down and my hubby helped me sand it and everything because I hurt myself my hands are really messed up right now but I don't know if this is Baltic birch or whatever. I would say it's just, I don't know, plywood. Maybe pine plywood. And let's see what um, Renee suggests for uh, prepping the surface. So it says, sand with fine grit sandpaper until smooth. Wipe away dust with DecoArt multi-purpose multi multi sealer. Seal and let dry. Sand over the piece with fine grit sandpaper again to knock off any raised wood grain until smooth. And then we're going to base coat. And the way she has us do it, I'm doing it my way. So see, you guys can just follow her direct directions directly, whatever I'm trying to say. It's Maybe, it's, maybe I'm tired. I'm going to paint the whole thing blue. She has you seal it first, and I'm going to use, she said DecoArt, I have the Joe Sonia all-purpose sealer. So, maybe I'll just follow her exact wishes. It just saves me a step, I think. Because what I would do is, I would mix. I'm going to use the Deep Midnight Blue for my background color. And it just I feel like it saves me a step. It might not even do that. Let me think. Because what she's going to have us do is just seal it. Just seal the wood first. Let it dry, sand it smooth, then go in with your base coats. And what I like to do is mix a little bit of the paint into the sealer, give it a once over coat, and then sand it. And that way the color, I don't know, it gets me one coat for free. I kind of have a, a blue base coat. Then when I sand it, then if I give it one more coat, I'm done a lot of times. Because let's see how many she says. Base coat the... Uh, top of the breadboard with deep midnight blue. This, this may take a few coats. Sanding with very san fine sandpaper between coats or using a piece of brown paper bag. When the top is base coated, remove... So she's going to put painter's tape on here to separate out the top and bottom so that you can get that little... This is... Uh, I think she's going to use... can't find it. I'm like drawing a blank. The color. Uh, buttermilk. I'm sorry. Um, anyway, I'm going to just do it my way, but just be, listen, 
I'm not, this isn't going to be an heirloom for life, for generations, you know. I am just doing it for fun to share it with you guys. Um, but if it were a piece that I was going to, you know, hand down from generation to generation, I would be much more particular. But I'm not being very particular. Okay, so I put out two about quarter size puddles and I kind of just brush mix them and just get some sealer mixed in with the paint and now I have a blue sealer and it also becomes my bottom coat of base coating and I'll probably do this to both sides of this board um, because you will probably see the back of it sometimes I won't even base coat the back of things because if it's especially if it's going to hang on the wall or you know it depends if, if I really think you're going to see it like look, I just did this little gnome and I didn't base coat the back of it because I'm lazy and I signed it with a pen. Um, and you know, it's just, if you're a stickler for that type of stuff, do it. If it makes you happy, do it. But for me, um, I really just, I get more excited about the finish, but this is not the best part for me. I don't like prepping. I don't like any of this stuff. Sanding, that's kind of like, you know, the dirty work that you got to do. You got to do it, so I do it. But I want to get down to the nitty gritty, the cute stuff. And then I just kind of like to do my brush strokes in the same direction, but not always. And I'm going to put a little more out. I'm going to leave that. Put a little more out. And... <coughs> I don't know, this doesn't seem to be really sucking in the paint right now. I don't know, maybe it was, it's been in the basement for a long time, but I'm going to just brush mix this again, and I probably should put down a piece of paper or something. Uh, yes, I have like this like brown paper towel. I just don't want it to get like all over my desk. We'll see if this does the trick. And look, Renee put the directions there for a reason, and that's what she stands by. I just am a shortcut doer, and I'm learning a lot, like, oh, Jesus, okay. With this coronavirus thing, like, rules are there for a reason. You know, there are reasons. People have reasons, and I don't need to know the reasons. I need to just follow directions, but I don't. Like, it's just one of my character defects. Do you know what I mean? But, if the painting police don't come over, I should be okay. So, if you don't tell, I won't tell. And guess what? I'll bet you it works out anyway. So, basically, I have to let this dry. And then I'm going to take it out on the front porch and give it a quick sanding. Then I'm going to use my painter's tape. And this is going to stick. I'm going to, um, see, I just like to slap it on there and slather it up and be done. Because um, this is the messy part. So I'll be back when it's dry and sanded and I'll come back. I'm going to do the other side too. And then I'll come back and I'll show you that how she tapes it off and does the like second coat and you'll see. I'll be right back. Okay. I kind of forced it dry with my um, embossing tool. And it's got some real rough... See this like from when we cut it? It's, it brings the tooth of the wood out. Um, but it's pretty dry and like... You can see some of the overlap, like this was the first side I painted and the paint came over here and stuff like that. But I'm going to go sand it now. So I'm going to get this nice and smooth. I think I'm going to go use the um, sander that in the basement that got me. But um, it might be too rough, Like, but my sandpaper, my little hoard here of sandpaper, I really want to find my Tim Holtz sandpaper that goes in this little tool and I don't know where I put it, but because that's like the perfect grit to do this step. But then once we get the real base coat on here, we only want to use a really fine sandpaper. But I only have, I'll go look in the basement and see what I have. But when I come back, 
it'll be sanded and ready for a nice base coat of what we're going to be putting our design on. So I'll be back. Okay, so <laughs> I used, and it's a belt sander, right? So there's this piece of sandpaper, and it's on a belt, and it's really big, and it goes really fast. And it, like, takes the thing right out of your hand if you're not careful. And look what I did to the back. Like, I went way too hard. But anyway, so this will be my back because it's nice and smooth. This took me, like, two minutes. That's why. Look, I didn't want to break a sweat. I took a shower. I don't want to be all sweaty before bed. Anyway, um, <laughs> look, I, pr I practically took it off the sides. But, see, I feel like the... If the wood is porous, the sealer goes into the wood. Anyway, that's my theory. So what I'm going to do now is just go with straight, deep midnight blue. I should follow her directions. I'm going to see. Do I have painter's tape here? Um, I have, you know what I have? I have masking tape because I did, I just, I literally just used up my painter's tape because I painted the front porch. Um, the banisters and the railings and all that stuff and so I literally I think it's all used up but I'm gonna just grab my masking tape you could probably use washi tape but I have this masking tape and what I'll do is I'll put it on my pants first like I'm just gonna stick it to my I just have cotton like pants on they're like pajama pants almost and I'll just do it a couple times on there. You know what I mean? Like, so I stuck it to my pants and then you peel it off. And then all the little fibers, like put it on your shirt and all the little fibers get um, pulled off. And then I'm gonna um, put it evenly. Can you see what I'm doing? Yeah. Um, just like right here, I'm just eyeballing it basically, but I'm gonna take my tracing and see about how high up the design needs to go because what we're going to do is, you know what, let me see, I'll measure it on here. So it's a um, like an inch and a half, it's like a little over an inch and a half, so I'm going to go an inch and just over an inch and a half. I don't really want to get my head in the shot since I my roots haven't been done in a while. But I kind of do want it straight because it will it'll be noticeable. So I'm just going to hold that up and have a look at it. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And I'm just going to do this top part blue. So I am just going to take, and I'm just going to flip over. I'm just using, um, what is this called? Deli paper. Shake up my paint. And my brush has been sitting in my water bucket. And this is base coating, prepping a piece, right? I like to mix a little bit of water, and it's dirty water. See it? Pretty blue right now. Um, and I'm not going to go full strength. I'll probably blot my brush a little bit, but then I'm going to pick up this paint with a wet brush and it's going to, and I'm loading the brush and then it's going to slide right across this surface. So nice. And here's what you do. So you go like this or I'll go sideways and right over the paint. And then when we lift off the paint, that line will be nice and straight and then we'll put the tape another piece of tape there when we do the um i guess it was buttermilk but see now because i based i don't know if it saves me a step or not it seems like it saves me a step when i add the paint to the um the sealer but see like how that's coming up opaque and i don't really need another coat like I, it, it's I don't know, instead of doing three coats of sealer, paint, paint, I can just do sealer and paint, paint, and then I'm done. Does that make sense? And like I said, I like to go in one direction. Um, and I'm seeing a little bit of sandy imperfections under there, which is fine. I'm going to go ahead and do the sides. Well, should I? 
Yeah, I am. Because it just saves you doing it at the end, which I'm really lazy and I probably wouldn't do it at the end. But because I did such a terrible sand job, I want to put paint there. Like I took off too much paint. And the back is the back, so I'm not going to worry about my overlap, but I want to, I'm going to smooth this out. Like, it's drying already, and I have a fan on in here, because that's my life. I have fans because I'm menopause, and it's just starting to get warmer, too, so. But thank goodness for the inventions that we have. And I'm just going to pull the overlap up a little just so it's not like such a big and I'm just gonna put it down so it looks pretty opaque I'm seeing some shine like it's already drying in some areas and we are gonna sand this again very lightly like I'll probably just use this is a super fine it says 150 I don't even know if that's the finest I think I even have a finer fine this is 400. I think it's pretty fine. But you can tell by the grit of the sandpaper. And that's why she said even with a paper bag, like a, a bag that you would get at the grocery store, you can rip that and make it into a little piece of sandpaper. And believe it or not, that will just smooth out the paint, the coat of paint. So look how it's, it's opaque. It's pretty opaque. I see like... The paint will actually, I'm going to go ahead and put that in water. The paint will actually start to bring the tooth back out again of the wood. So I'm seeing little hints of uh, wood. What is it? Like the jagged edge of the wood where we cut the wood. But once I do that fine sanding, it'll be good. So this is how you prep your piece. I'm just going to see this is really thick right here. But even though I sanded off that part that um, here that there wasn't any blue showing, like I might have took off all the base coat that I did, the first base coat, it'll be fine. Like I don't think that's, that paint, when I'm finished, this isn't going to fall off the wood. It's still on there. Um, and so for, for my purposes, what I'm going to be using this for, it's going to be great. It's going to be fine. And then we're also going to, see I'm really tempted to throw a coat on the back, but that's, I'll do it after the video. I'll do it before I go to bed. And then tomorrow when I come down, I'll be able to just get started. We'll be able to put the um, pattern on here, trace it on. And then she has us undercoating everything. It says... Um, undercoat the design areas to be painted with sand so sand is I don't even think I have sand let's see but you know it's like a sand color right so I would use whatever other color like a light brown and then I'm going to actually undercoat everything with one coat so I'll do each of the daisies I guess they're daisies the leaves, probably not the um, stems. I don't even know if you can see that. The watermelon and these leaves. Undercoat them all with sand. And that way, when we add, because, because when you paint on top of a dark color, the um, color won't show up as much. Like it won't, um, it won't become opaque as fast as it will if we paint on a light color. So that's why she's having us undercoat it, I assume. And me, being me, may skip those steps sometimes because I just feel like, I don't know, I'm just, I am a rule breaker. And so, um, I hope I didn't, this didn't bleed under, but I don't think it would. I might do a little another coat um, I'm just going to like let it dry. See how it's starting to dry. You can still see some shine. But I think we're doing good. I think it's opaque enough for me. Honestly, I really don't think I'm going to do another coat. I'm going to give it a light sanding and then I might have to do another coat. That's a good point. Alright, 
let me, um, I'm going to blow dry this dry and then I'm going to give it a light sanding and then we'll see if I need to do another coat, but I'll do it off camera. All right, I did the back too. And I'll probably not sand that yet, but like, I want to see if you're going to be able to, you're not going to be able to notice, but I'm taking this super fine sandpaper and it kind of takes the shine off of it and dulls it down, but you don't want to take too much paint off. But man, it gets smooth and I love a smooth surface when I paint. Oh yeah, that's good. Now I am going to just make sure I do these edges. Just want that to be no um, sharp edges. See right here, there's like little, I don't know, it's the plastic of the paint, but it like, so I am going to just give this a very thin coat um, just to top that off. Really thin, like a lot of, um, see I already flipped it over. And I just want to get these edges so they're not sharp. I should be doing this outside, but whatever. It's it's beautiful out, actually. It's beautiful. I'll go out there when I take the dogs before I go to bed. All right. So now it kind of looks like um, a little bit uh, worn out or something. So I'm just going to pop that up real quick with adjusted, like I said, another, um, just getting off the sawdust, the sand dust or whatever you want to call it. Make sure that's glued down still. And again, there's a little bit of paint left on my, and I am really just picking up, well, I probably am going to need more, but this is basically just water, but it'll just make it putting a little water on my brush and just like mixing a little bit of water. I move really fast too, you guys, like. So this is a super thin coat. And I'm not gonna worry about the sides. Just like right along that edge. Yummy. That's done. It's done. And I want to do the reveal. So ready? This is way too sticky. Um, like I have to get that tack down because when I put it over here again, like now I'm going to let this dry and then I'm going to put a piece of tape on this side. And I don't really need to because, I mean, I can be careful, but I probably should. Um, so, yeah, I would just, I'm really going to make sure, or maybe I'm going to go look for the, uh, the paint, the painter's tape. It might be out on the front porch. And then we're going to do, um, because I still haven't painted some more stuff on my porch. They're gonna, we're gonna do the bottom with what? Buttermilk. So I will get the buttermilk or light buttermilk or antique white or whatever you have. You don't have to use, it's a light color. Let's see, I think I do have it. So I'm just gonna show you, here it is. Like this is what buttermilk looks like. It's kind of got a yellowish tint to it. This is called antique white. So that's a little bit more yellow. Uh, let's see. I don't see sand. So I, Oh, here's antique white. I have a lot of antique white, so maybe I would use antique white, but I'll use the... Anywho, because she said to um, base coat it with sand, remember? Antique white. I have tons of antique white, 
but not a lot of buttermilk. <clears throat> Let me see what other, <coughs> let's see, flowers, <coughs> marigold, burnt sienna. <coughs> what are the leaves um, of the flowers? I guess they're yellow. Where's my picture? Now this, like, I'm wondering what color that is, if it's white. Let's see, I think we're going to do, like, a faux finish to make this look, or we're going to highlight it, because see how that looks like it has a little streaks of white? Anyway, I'll do it with buttermilk. I have plenty in here. So let me see. This is already drying because it was so thin. And it's pretty smooth. Although you could still sand this before we trace our pattern on here. But I'm going to leave this overnight. And you can still, like, like she said, hit it with a paper bag. Like a piece of paper bag. Yeah, that's dry already. But see how the sides, I um, sanded those. So I'll just go over those. But I'm going to go get the um, painter's tape and do the bottom with buttermilk and that's it like you don't really need to see me do it but that's prepping your piece sanding it getting it ready see now on the back is all that uh, sawdust or whatever you want to call it sanding dust um, but yeah it is worth it to get the piece nice I mean you shouldn't skip the stuff because it in the end it'll make it look nicer you know but once we get to those details, it's going to look super pretty anyway. So when I come back tomorrow, I will have this all ready to go. Trace my pattern on. Um, I'll remind you. I'll review that tomorrow. Um, and then we'll start to undercoat everything with sand or whatever I have that I'm going to use. Maybe I'll use uh, antique white. This looks kind of sandy. Uh, it might be more brown, but I think I have tons of this, so I'm probably going to use it. So yeah, so basically you would just take a piece of tape now and go across here. But you really want to make sure this is dry and that your tape is not too tacky because you will lift off that. You can, it is possible to lift off the paint. I've done it. Um, and then just check everything and make sure it's ready to go. And then I'll meet you back here tomorrow and we will paint this sucker. It's going to be quick. All right, you guys, let me put this in front. All right, I'll see you. Thanks for watching.